here, I have a question for you today. What is the number one most important vitamin there is for kidney health? Do you know the answer? Well, write it down in comment section. Because some may say vitamin C, and that will not be completely wrong. Because vitamin C is an antioxidant, it has detoxing properties, and it helps with blood pressure. Others will say that vitamin B12 is even more important because it is not naturally present in the renal diet and a deficiency may cause anemia and fast kidney damage. But you see, the answer is another. There is a vitamin that's even more crucial for kidney health at the point that some experts call it the kidney vitamin. Yes, I'm talking about vitamin D. But why is vitamin D so important for people with kidney disease? Well, first of all, because supplementing this vitamin correctly has been linked to a huge improvement in proteinuria levels. And when I say huge, I mean it. Up to 34% lower proteinuria was observed in patients taking this vitamin. And well, your proteinuria level is the most powerful predictor of kidney function decline which means that lowering this level will delay dialysis. On the other hand, in all the stages of CKD, the lower the vitamin D levels are, the faster the decline of kidney function. And we absolutely don't want this to happen. But there is more to vitamin D than just reducing proteinuria and helping you avoid dialysis. Vitamin D helps with blood pressure. In fact, blood pressure medications won't do their job properly when vitamin D is too low. Vitamin D is also crucial for the thyroid. Too low vitamin D may cause or worsen secondary hyperparathyroidism, which is also correlated to vascular calcification, by the way, a potentially fatal condition. And vitamin D is also needed for bone health, immune function, blood sugar control, and more. A deficiency may actually worsen diabetes. Unfortunately, most CKD patients take vitamin D all wrong. I've also seen doctors giving prescriptions for vitamin D that are incredibly dangerous and that have caused very bad side effects. So it's imperative that you get informed about the kidney vitamin, right? This is what we do today. We make sure you are taking the vitamin D that is right for you, which is not as easy as it may seem. Now question, why is it so hard to take vitamin D correctly? The reason is, well, kidney disease. You see, the kidneys play a major role in converting vitamin D into its active form, all right? But as CKD progresses, the kidney's ability to activate vitamin D is lost. But what does that mean for you exactly? Well, first of all, that a huge number of patients are suffering from vitamin D deficiency or insufficiency. And that's a big problem. 84.7% of CKD stage 5 patients and 74.6% of stage 4 patients have too low levels of this vitamin, as we can see. And things are not much better in stage 3. We could basically say that if you have CKD, you have 3 out of 4 chances of having a vitamin D deficiency or insufficiency. And well, that's very bad. As we have seen, CKD progression is much faster in those with low vitamin D levels. So basically, vitamin D deficiencies are common in CKD patients because the kidneys are the organs supposed to convert vitamin D into the active form and having low levels damages the kidneys, among other problems. So the question is, can we just supplement more vitamin D to deal with this conversion problem? No, it's not a good idea to supplement more vitamin D than recommended. You see, this is a fat-soluble vitamin that, weight rare, can cause accumulation and toxicity. The big danger here is hypercalcemia. Vitamin D, especially if supplemented alone, may cause calcium to accumulate in the arteries. Absolutely not something you want. This is why most patients are recommended to only supplement 1000 IU vitamin D3 a day or 25 micrograms, which is a low dose. However, you should also know that this vitamin should never be supplemented alone, not even in this low dose. 
Vitamin D should always be taken in the combination with one key mineral and one supporting vitamin. It won't help you otherwise. So the first thing you need to supplement here is vitamin K2. This is a vitamin that's crucial to supplement when supplementing vitamin D. It will be very unwise to supplement vitamin D without this vitamin. Why, you may ask? Because one of the main functions of vitamin D is to transport dietary calcium throughout your arteries, all right? But you don't want this calcium to remain in the arteries. That's called arterial calcification and it's bad. This is why you need to supplement vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 helps make sure the calcium ends up where it belongs, absorbed by your bones. And this is going to come with several visible benefits. Patients have reported visible improvements in dental health when taking vitamin K2 and it can even help with arthritis and bone pain because it reduces the inflammation. Now, there are two types of vitamin K2 you could supplement MK7 and MK4. And you can also get a little bit of this vitamin from foods. But what I usually recommend is to just buy vitamin K2 in the MK7 form, which is the cheaper and easier to find. And just supplement 100 to 200 micrograms per day. Take it in the morning with fats. Okay, the third piece of the puzzle here is maybe the most important. Magnesium. Always take magnesium. Magnesium and vitamin D are connected and supplementing vitamin D without magnesium will be unwise. Magnesium is a mineral that's involved in many biochemical reactions including the synthesis and metabolism of vitamin D. Without enough magnesium present, vitamin D is stored in the body and not used. So if you start taking vitamin D, the body may use all the magnesium it can to actually benefit from this vitamin D. But this may actually cause your magnesium levels to be depleted, which is absolutely not something you want. A magnesium deficiency can cause your blood pressure to skyrocket, very bad for kidney health. It's also a cause for anxiety, insomnia, worsened blood sugar levels, and more. Always supplement magnesium. Magnesium is extremely important to keep your body and kidneys functioning properly. Recently, magnesium made headlines because low levels of this mineral were linked to a faster decline in kidney function and earlier end-stage renal failure. So if you are supplementing vitamin D, which you probably should, also take magnesium. According to recent studies, taking 300 to 400 mg daily of magnesium oxide is the best way of giving this mineral in the correct range. But while you should always take vitamin D in the morning, I recommend to supplement magnesium in the evening though, since it helps you sleep. Never skip this step if you take vitamin D. I've seen patients suffering from very bad anxiety and insomnia just because they forgot to take magnesium for a couple of months while taking vitamin D. And some of you guys asked me some weeks ago if there are better forms of magnesium to supplement because magnesium oxide is not very bioavailable. And the answer is in this video up here and also down in the description. But don't go away yet! There is one more step we need to focus on when it comes to vitamin D. So the big question is, is supplementing vitamin D plus K2 and magnesium enough to solve the vitamin D crisis? As we have seen, having the correct vitamin D level is crucial for kidney health. A deficiency in vitamin D is directly linked to proteinuria and fast declining kidney function. However, almost every single kidney patient has dangerously low level of this vitamin. And as I was saying, the problem is not that they don't get enough of it. The problem is that their kidneys cannot activate it. This is why today studies are pointing out that giving just regular vitamin D3 to people with kidney disease stage 3 or more is not enough because their kidneys may not be able to activate enough vitamin D3. So what is usually recommended is to supplement a form of vitamin D that's already activated, all right? That's different from regular vitamin D3. It's a prescription. And today there are several activated forms of vitamin D available that your doctor can prescribe to you. These medications are called vitamin D analogs. 
These include calcitriol, paracalcitol, calcifidiol, and more. The correct type of vitamin D analog and dose depends on your serum levels and on your thyroid hormone levels. Blood tests are required for your doctor to make the right prescription if you need a vitamin D analog. Make sure you are doing all the steps in this video. Make sure your levels of vitamin D are in order. Get tested for this vitamin and supplement adequately if you care about your kidneys. This is essential and it can make a huge difference. And guys, if you want to see what other supplements can make a difference for people with kidney disease, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.